Hi, it's Martin from In The Mess. Today, we're gonna to talk about metaraminol. As a surgical foundation doctor, rotating through various surgical specialties, you'll be expected to look after patients on the surgical high dependency unit. Some of these will have had major operations or be, or be septic. These patients may be on metaraminol, and it's something you need to be aware of and know how to manage. We won't expect you to be able to prescribe or adjust a prescription of metaraminol. You need to understand why it's prescribed so that you can manage the patient appropriately. We use metaraminol to maintain a normal perfusing blood pressure. Metaraminol is an alpha-1 vasopressor, meaning it causes vasoconstriction. This means it's useful in scenarios such as sepsis, where patients have peripheral vasodilation, and also post spinal or regional anesthetic, where you get vasodilation due to the anesthetic that's been used. Another advantage of metaraminol is that it can either be used peripherally or centrally. So it's easily used in patients on the surgical high dependency unit who don't have central access. It's also commonly used in theater when vasodilation occurs during a general anesthetic. So it makes sense to continue this up on the surgical high dependency unit. A prescription for metaraminol can look quite confusing at first, but it's useful to know the basics. It's made up normally in a 20 mil syringe to a concentration of 0.5 milligrams per mil. It's normally started around a rate of, of five milliliters per hour. So that's 2.5 milligrams per hour. On the prescription chart, there is an upper and a lower limit of mean arterial pressure based on what the prescriber has decided. If the BP reaches the lower limit as prescribed, the nurses will increase the rate of infusion. If it reaches the upper limit, they will decrease the rate of infusion to maintain a normal tensive state for the patient. Mean arterial pressure, or MAP, is basically an average of the arterial pressure. On the monitor, you can see it in the brackets, and this is normally on the art line and on the non-invasive trace. But if you want to work out MAP yourself, you can use the equation shown on screen here. For most people, we would aim for a MAP of above 65, but those with more complex vascular disease, we would aim for a MAP above 75. Don't worry, we won't be expecting you to make these decisions. They should either be made by the anaesthetist or your registrar. It's also useful to be aware of the max rate of prescription because the nurses will phone you and say that the patient is approaching this maximum rate and what should they do next. At this point, it's really important to reassess the patient and have a chat to your senior to work out what's going on. Whilst undergoing a metaraminal infusion, patients must be in an appropriate environment. This means either in a critical care setting, surgical high dependency, or a close observation unit that routinely uses metaraminol. Ideally, they should have invasive arterial blood pressure measurements via an art line, but it can be done using non-invasive blood pressure. Continuous ECG monitoring is also required because it can cause a bradycardia. Lastly, some practical tips and tricks on how to manage a patient who has a metaraminal infusion running. Look at the OpNote and the anaesthetic chart to find out exactly why they have metaraminol running. Remember, metaraminol is not the cure to all hypertension. The patient may be dry from inadequate fluid resuscitation or excessive bleeding. Check the input and output charts, including urine output, any drain volumes, and make sure, again, you look at the OpNote for any intraoperative bleeding. You can check hemoglobin on a venous gas if you're in a hurry. Remember that after acute bleeding, the hemoglobin may not drop for some time particularly if you haven't adequately fluid resuscitated the patient. Your patient might be hypovolemic with a normal hemoglobin because they haven't been fluid resuscitated. You measure the concentration of hemoglobin in the sample you have, not the total body hemoglobin. So the HB doesn't drop until you've fluid resuscitated and filled the patient up. Then you'll find that the patient actually has a hemoglobin of 40 when you thought it was 80. So it's essential that you do a full fluid review uh, of these patients to make sure that they have been fluid resuscitated and you're not getting a falsely elevated HB. Finally, if you have a patient that you're worried about who has an increasing metaraminol requirement, assess them using an ABCD approach, ask for senior help early, and you may, may require critical care for further organ support. Don't forget to like and subscribe so you never miss a thing.